So for the second cake, we are going to level it as well. We're just going to get rid of this top bulge. So like we used our leveling tool earlier, I've set it a bit higher because this cake is a bit higher. So we're just going to get rid of this top. Okay, so now we take our top off and we're going to keep this because I'm going to show you how to serve this up later. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn our cake upside down. So in order to stick it to your board, again, you're going to use your melted apricot jam. Just rub it on the board. It's just to make it sticky so it doesn't have to be a lot. The reason I'm using apricot jam is because it's traditionally used in fruitcakes. Any recipe that is from like my granny's cookbook all called for apricot jam. And I've tried it with strawberry jam and it just didn't taste the same. So I prefer apricot jam, but you can experiment if you'd like. The reason we're going to use marzipan to fill our holes is just to make our cake a bit smoother so that when we cover it with plastic icing, you don't get any indents or imperfections um, underneath that like, sort of comes through the uh, plastic icing. So we can get started. So marzipan is almond paste. Um, it's not the plastic icing or the fondant is sugar paste, so it's made of sugar and then this is almond paste made of almonds. Um, so I feel, I'm just trying to feel the texture to see if we need to add anything to make it softer to work with. But I think it's fine, because if there was, if your, fun, your marzipan was hard, um, you can put it in the microwave for like 10-15 seconds just to warm it up, um, to soften it up. And if it's still not workable, then you need to add a quarter cup of brandy or even less just to get the consistency right so you can work with it. So we're just going to soften it up a bit. Filling the holes is going to get a bit sticky because we're going to take a piece of marzipan, just work it in your hand, and we're going to take some of the apricot jam and we're going to make this sort of pliable so that it fits into the hole and blends in so you're going to use your hands basically for this so you take a little bit on your hand and you take a piece of the marzipan and you just work it to make it softer and we're just gonna place it in that hole right there see so it's going to be level with the cake now so it's getting it in there So we're just going to do that again. Any holes that you think could possibly show where the icing would sort of sink into it, just get rid of that. So marzipan is mostly used on fruit cakes. It helps your cake last longer. So it locks in all that moisture and that's why fruit cakes can last up to six months maybe. Um, so it just locks in all that moisture and keeps it sort of fresh. Old school weddings would normally have a fruit cake, um, and they would save it for a year. They put it in their freezer and keep it up to a year. Um, and that's the only kind, kind of cake that you can keep in the freezer for up to a year. I wouldn't keep a vanilla or chocolate cake for a year. I don't think I would do that. Um, but that's why the marzipan is on there, also just to keep it moist after you defrost it, probably, but I wouldn't, I don't know, I haven't done a fruit cake for a wedding cake yet. No one wants fruit cakes anymore for weddings. So because it's sticky, I'm just adding a little bit of icing sugar, just to take the stickiness away. And at this point you can just make it as firm as you need it because obviously before it was way too firm to work with and it wouldn't you wouldn't have been able to roll it out so at this point it's to the consistency i want it's not breaking apart it's all stuck together but it's still soft enough to roll out so we're gonna put icing sugar on our work surface a clean work surface and we're going to do it nice and thick so that your marzipan doesn't stick to your counter. So we're just going to put it all around with about a tablespoon of icing sugar. 
once your marzipan is in a nice ball, so that when you roll it out, it's round. We're gonna put it on our surface, and we're gonna roll from the inside out. And while you're rolling, we're just gonna move it around, move the icing sugar around so that it doesn't stick. And it's fine if the icing sugar gets on top of your marzipan because we're gonna cover it with the plastic icing afterwards anyway. We can just check if it's sticking again. No sticking. So we just move it around. Now we're gonna measure our cake from the height and then the length across and then back down. And then we can see how big our circle needs to be. So now you are gonna pick your marzipan up using your rolling pin because you cannot pick it up like this because it's going to stretch and break so we roll it up so we take the edge we just bring it onto our rolling pin and we lift it up slightly and then we bring our cake to the center and we pull it over so this was a big piece of marzipan so you can use a lot less if you have a small cake like mine rubbing the top of the cake and we're just pushing it down on the sides as well so that it doesn't cut or tear around the edge of the cake because it's quite sharp. So we just want to push it firmly onto the cake. So that's like the first thing you actually need to do, push it along the sides so that it doesn't tear. You're just going to cut away any excess marzipan. It doesn't have to be neat at this point, you're just cutting the excess. So we're just cutting it away, just so that that big pieces are gone. And we're still gonna be rubbing this to make it smooth and we're still just making sure that there's no air bubbles, but just pushing it out. So when you're putting any um, marzipan or plastic icing on your cake, you always work from the top down. So you would just, obviously, like I said, push the corners flat first, because otherwise it can tear and it's not great when you have that skin on the side here. But because this is marzipan, it's going to be covered, so it doesn't really matter. But we still want our cakes to look perfect and sharp. So at this point, we're going to use cake smoothers. I have two cake smoothers because I just feel like it works better with two. So we're just going to rub the top of our cake so that it's completely smooth. And if you see a bubble, you just take... I have a needle tool, but you can take a normal pin or anything that's like really small, and you just poke a hole in wherever you see hole, um, air bubbles or where you see it rising and then you just smooth it afterwards and it just pushes all that air out. Okay, and then to work the side of your cake, you're just going to take your smoothers and just rub it out. Push down any extra fondant or any extra marzipan. And it will take away all your, because you were dabbing it with your hands, so this will take away all your finger marks and prints that's left on it. Okay, and then at this point, because you've pressed all the marzipan down to the bottom, you can trim away all the rest of the excess. And what you're going to do is just as close as possible to the bottom of your cake. That's where you cut it. So where you fix your cake with your marzipan in the holes, you rub the bit of apricot jam there. So that should make the marzipan stick. But if you had a perfect cake with smooth edges, you would need to brush your cake with the um, melted apricot jam just so that your marzipan can stick. So luckily I did all those um, holes and had apricot jam because my marzipan could stick. So now we're just going to continue making the edges um, a bit sharper because we want a very neat cake. Okay, so we have a base to work with now for covering it with fondant. So you'll see um, pieces of icing sugar and um, sometimes you don't get your corners uh, perfect because you are pushing the marzipan down and you get like an extra piece and you're just gonna push those extra pieces down because whatever visually doesn't look good, as long as it's flat to your cake, it's fine because we're gonna cover it with plastic icing and that will just, you won't see it basically. 
So as long as you have something to cover, to work with, that has sharp-ish edges and it looks neat and level, then it's perfect. Your mozzipan that you have left over, you can just wrap it up with cling wrap and put it in an airtight container and you can keep it for whatever cake you want to cover next. You can use it on normal cakes, but preferably on um, fruit cakes. So it's just going to mean you're going to have to make more fruit cakes. So for our plastic icing, also called fondant or sugar paste, we are using a fondant rolling mat. Um, you don't have to have a mat. You can do it the same way I did the uh, mozzipan. You can just put icing sugar all over your counter and roll it out. Or you can get a fondant mat, also at baking supply stores. Um, so basically it's a sheet at the bottom and a sheet on the top. And the sheet at the top It has all your measurements on it, so basically you just have to sandwich your uh, fondant and roll it out. And then I'll show you how to apply it afterwards. So I'm just going to roll it out. And our measurement earlier on was 27 centimeters, so I will roll it out as far as the 12 inch 30 centimeter mark. Because we'd rather have more than less. So the same with the fondant, you're just gonna go inside from the center out. And the good thing about this mat is that it's giving you your circle basically. So it gives you a guideline to follow. Just gonna reposition the top mat so that it's on the bottom one correctly. Just continue to roll. So now you just need to feel if it's smooth and no lumps in between and that it's level. And if you feel a bit of a lump, you can take your cake smoother and just rub out anything that feels uneven. Okay, so that feels even. And you want to roll your fondant out I always roll it half a centimeter thick because I don't know, I just prefer it to be thicker and you can, it's more, you can work with it better and you can fix any, if, you're, if the bottom of your cake has any lumps and bumps or holes or whatever, it, the thicker fondant fills those holes and so you don't see it on the outside. So now that this is all smooth. Okay, so we're going to take the top sheet off and we are going to put some apricot jam on this so that the fondant can stick and all along the sides as well. You just want to do a thin layer, so just remember to melt your apricot jam. So now with the mat, you don't have to lift your icing up, you lift your whole mat up. So you're going to lift your mat. And you're going to place the fondant on the side, in the middle. You just pull it off. And then immediately you go in and you just push it on the sides of your cake so that your fondant doesn't tear. Just constantly smooth your cake. And like I said before, you work your way down from the top. So you just want to make sure that it's sticking. So once you've gotten to the bottom and you've pulled out any, like if there's a fold, like over here, there's a fold in the middle, so your fondant would do that. So what you would do is just open it over there and then work it down. Just work any of those areas down. And if you have an air bubble, you're just gonna pop it and work it. Okay. Again, you can just cut it roughly just to get rid of most of the excess pieces. Okay, and then just again, push down to the bottom so we can seal the bottom. You can take your smoother as well, wrap it around the sides just to smooth the bottom just to cut it off at the bottom to seal 
your cake in your fondant. Okay, and then we're just gonna cut away there where you've sealed it off. Cut as close to the cake as possible without cutting the fondant that's at the bottom of your cake away. But if you do cut the bottom and you make a mess or you think it looks untidy, you can just hide it with a ribbon. So it doesn't matter what the bottom looks like, just get a pretty ribbon and hide it. So once you've cut away all the excess, you can take your smoother, rub it on the sides, just smooth all those edges. Okay, and now this part is the same as when we did the marzipan. You're gonna, if there's any lines or bumps or anything, you're just gonna use your smoother and you're gonna hold pressure more in the center of the cake than on the top or the bottom. So you're just gonna rub with some pressure of your fingers and you're just gonna push the top out again to make sharp edges. Rub, push. And you can work it as slow as you like. Try not to make any holes or mistakes with your smoothers. But if you do, you can just smooth it out again. See, you can notice with the plastic icing, it's not as soft as the marzipan. So you need to put a bit more elbow grease into it. So I've just transferred the cake onto a, another board so that we can turn the board instead of turning the cake. Because otherwise your cake is gonna stick to your surface that you're working on. So we just wanna work with it on something else. See, and there's a bubble over here. So we're just gonna poke the bubble and then work it out. And it's on top as well, so we just poke it on top as well. And then we just work it out. Something is under this that's making it soft. It's fine if you stab your cake, you can just fix it by smoothing it. So we just push that bubble down because it was quite a big one. And we just work this piece of fondant as well. So by doing this motion, you're bringing all the excess fondant down so this will seal the bottom of your cake. So you're just adding a little bit of pressure. Okay, so all those excess pieces, you're just gonna cut away. So any elephant skin, which is, let me just see if you can see some elephant skin. So over here, that's what we call elephant skin. So what we would do is just smooth it out as well. As long as your fondant isn't dry yet, that's why this process needs to be done quickly so that you can remove any imperfections in your fondant. Okay, so with the leftover fondant, we are gonna make gum paste. So this is about 500 grams of fondant. We're gonna add two teaspoons of CMC to it. And CMC is a hardening agent, so it's just gonna make it so that this is gonna dry a lot sooner than normal fondant would dry. So we're just gonna take our CMC. So what I do is I make a little hole in the icing and I put it in there. And then I'm just gonna work it through. And if you don't want it to stick to your hands, like it's sticking to my hands, you can use wooden spoon margarine. Okay, and you're gonna add your second spoon in once you, that's mixed in. Make another hole with your thumb. Just put it in there and put some wooden spoon or fat, anything on your hands. Once you have that incorporated into your fondant, it's now gum paste. So for the snowman, we're just gonna take the white fondant, break off a piece of the white fondant as much as you're gonna need. 
and we're just going to wrap the rest of it up in plastic so that it doesn't dry out or get hard while we're busy working with the other small piece. Roll it around in a circle and also just compare it to your cake. You just want to see how big your snowman would be. I think that's a good size for the bottom. And again, you're going to take some of your wooden spoon or your fat. Just so that you can smooth the fondant. And this is the part I said would be fun for your kids to make a snowman from fondant. Sometimes you'll have creases or um, cuts and that part you just put at the bottom. So it doesn't have to show. Okay, so I have a piece of styrofoam and what we're going to do is take a toothpick and I've made some edible glue. So for the edible glue recipe you can find that on my website which is www.sugarmesparkle.co.za So you're going to take your toothpick and you're going to dip it in your glue and then the part that you've dipped in the glue will go into the snowman and make sure that you have half the length of the um, toothpick so that, that will, that's going to be the part that goes into the cake. So make sure that half of it is protruding and the other half you're just going to stick into the styrofoam. Okay. And remember snowman ball that they make is not perfect so your ball doesn't have to be perfect. It has to look as authentic as you want it to look. And it's fine if it comes out on the top, it's totally fine because we're going to add another toothpick because that part's going to go into the cake. So the other toothpick is just going to go in to this ball and then we're going to attach the head onto this toothpick. So now we're going to make the head of the snowman. We're going to take a brush of glue and then just put it on the rest of that toothpick and on that piece of fondant. Because I want the snowflakes to dry right now and I don't want to wait a few hours for it to dry, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit more of the CMC just so that we can accelerate the drying process. And it can be as thick or thin as you want it. With the CMC in the fondant, it gives you a lot of play with the fondant. So you can actually roll it out quite thin. So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use my smaller snowflake cutter. So what I'm doing now is just neatening the sides. Because sometimes your cutter doesn't cut it out very neat. So I would just press it down. Or I would take a flat clean brush and just press the sides down and you can do that on your board. So you just get rid of any funny edges or just push it under. So you want to remove these small pieces from inside your cutter because they'll get hard so quickly and they'll just stay in there. So the next time you want to use your cutter there'll be solid pieces there and it won't really cut out. If you don't want your cutter to get stuck in your fondant, you can just dip it in, in um, CMC or icing sugar or any powder or even um, mazina and it won't stick to your fondant. Okay, so these to dry I put them on foam so that it absorbs all the moisture out of it. See, and they're almost hard already because of the extra amount of CMC I put in them. So we'll just put them on this to dry. A dot, because because we want this to be bright, you can just squeeze a whole bunch in there and it's gonna make this red. And you can just add more or take some out. But normally you would take a toothpick amount size of um, colour and put it in, introduce it to your fondant. But because I want it to be as bright and vibrant as possible, I'm just adding a big drop. Just need to work it in there. Again, if you're getting sticky, take some of your fat or your wooden spoon, rub it on your hands.
Okay, so I'm not happy with this red, so I'm going to add a bit more red. Sometimes I like to mix my reds together. So I would add a gel and then also add a powder, Rolkem's poncho. So when you're adding a powder colour to fondant, you need to add a bit of any clear alcohol or um, Barco makes a clear uh, colour that you add to your powder or clear liquid that you add to your powder and so does Rolkem. So we're going to add the powder and the clear alcohol to your fondant because you want to dissolve your powder with the alcohol. So you're just going to take a little bit of that because the powder is a concentrated powder so it's actually going to work much faster and stronger than the gel. And we're just going to add a drop of alcohol. Just going to mix that in there. And then work it through your fondant. And also colour develops if you leave it to stand. So if you're mixing it now and an hour later or so, it, should, it will be a brighter colour to what you actually made it. So once I mix this in, I'm just going to wrap it up and let it stand for a bit. And then mix my other colours. So now we're just going to do exactly the same that we did with the red, the same way we coloured it. We are going to make green and brown fondant. Take a small piece of the brown off, add a little bit more CMC so that it hardens faster. And we are going to make the arms. So we're first going to use a toothpick and poke the holes, uh, marking where the arms are going to be. So after we've poked our holes in our snowman, we are going to make the arms using a small piece of the brown fondant. So roll it into like a little sausage and then once you've rolled it long enough, you can cut it into two and we can make both arms from this. And we want this to look like a twig. So just cut like little slits at the bottom um, to make it look like fingers sort of. And then we're gonna place this on the foam. Now we are gonna roll out a little green nose. So we're gonna take a little piece of the green fondant. I'm not using orange because I didn't make any orange, but you can. Um, and we're gonna ma make it look like a carrot. So just roll it in your, um, the palm of your hand and make it look like a carrot. Take a toothpick and make the holes for the eyes so that we know where we wanna place the eyes and the nose. And then we are going to use dragees, black dragees, which are the little balls that you use for cakes. Um, and we're gonna place those in those holes. And before we place them in there, we're just gonna use a little bit of glue so that they can stay in the holes. And then using the dragees as well, um, we're just gonna place little holes on the snowman's belly um, using a toothpick. And again, using glue, we can stick the dragees in. Okay, so now we are going to make the snowman scarf. So we're going to roll out red and green fondant as thin as you can get it. We are then going to cut out strips of the red and green. And then using one of the strips, we're going to cut out blocks of that to make a little pattern um, on our scarf. And then we're going to roll that flat so that it can be flush together so that it looks like one piece of fabric. And then we're going to cut a little strip or just neaten the edges. And at this point, you can put a little glue around the snowman's shoulders, and then we're just gonna drape the scarf around his shoulders, making sure that it's completely neat and flowy, sort of looking like material. Then we're gonna drape the scarf over the other end, and you can cut away any um, long edges, and then just glue the scarf together, the two ends together, leaving a little bit at the edge so that you can cut 
some fringe using a little scissor and also just make sure that you're adding movement to your scarf so that it looks natural. So at this point we can add our arms. So you're just gonna add a little glue to your um, to the holes for the arms and you can just stick your um, twig arms in there and just move them however you want them to be. And then using a toothpick, we make little dots for the mouth um, for the placement of the mouth and then you can use black gel just to um, paint the dots on so you can just make a dotted mouth so at this point we want to stick our nose so add a little glue to the hole where the nose is and stick your nose on and don't make the silly mistake i just did by smudging the gel by putting your fingers on the mouth and smudging the gel but it can be fixed slightly by using clear alcohol and a paintbrush and just try to wipe that as clean as you can. Now we are gonna make the Santa's hat using red and white fondant. So firstly, you are gonna roll a cone shape using the red fondant and you want the top of your cone to be thinner and a little bit long so that you can bend it over so that it looks like a Santa's hat. Then with the bigger part, you're gonna use a ball tool or you can use your finger just to press a hole in the center so that it can go over the snowman's head so that it's the same shape as his head. Now we are going to roll out a thin piece of white fondant um, and we're going to cut a strip out of that. And then we're going to put a little bit of glue at the bottom of the Santa's hat and we're going to stick the white around that edge, just making sure that you're cutting it neatly at the back. Now you're going to take a small piece of white fondant, roll it in the palm of your hand into a ball and you're going to stick this at the tip of your Santa's hat. Using a little scissor you can just cut little um, slices into it just so that it makes it look like fluff. At this point you want to put a little glue on um, the snowman's head and just shape the hat however you want it, bend the tip over whichever way you want it to go and just make sure that the hat is secure on the snowman's head. Now we are going to make um, the holly using green fondant. I'm using a self-healing mat because the fondant doesn't stick to it and I can cut on this mat. Um, or you can roll your fondant out on icing sugar. Cut out your holly using a holly cutter. I'm using small pieces of batting, which I got at the fabric shop, to just shape the holly and give them a natural flow. So after you've cut out all your holly, you can make little red balls using red fondant just to finish off your holly. At this point, all the details of your cake are made and ready to go onto your cake. So we first want to find a place to put our snowman. So you can decide if you want it on the left or the right or in the middle. I'm going to place my snowman on the left of my cake. So I'm going to use a little glue and put that on my cake and then I'm going to stick the snowman onto my cake. At this point you can decide where you want to put your holly and your snowflakes and you can just decorate the cake however you want it to be. And voila, your beautifully decorated cake. 
Um, if you guys have any questions or if you came across any problems or any cake incidents, um, then just let me know, pop me a mail or comment on this video and I will be glad to respond to anything. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.